You're watching ESPN Sonic Blockbuster. This is sold out Rupp Arena for a top 10 showdown. Number five, Tennessee goes on the road to take on 10th ranked Kentucky. Both teams trying to bounce back from a home loss earlier this week. And with that, we welcome you courtside. Tom Hart alongside Jimmy Dykes. This scene is simply amazing. Yeah, Tom, I've been in here as an assistant coach on that Kentucky bench for a couple of years, multiple times in here for a game. All day long, there's been a buzz in Lexington. There's something different about this field tonight. Bitter rivalry between Kentucky and Tennessee. Both teams should have a desperate effort coming off of a loss. Yeah, that's the key word. Both of these teams trying to fix problems and work their way back into the win column. Tennessee lost at home to South Carolina on Tuesday. Kentucky lost in overtime to Florida on Wednesday. Dalton Connect has been the star of the show since he arrived from Northern Colorado. He's averaging 32 points a game over his last six. He's number one in the scouting report. It's a series that dates to 19 tennis 10. It's Kentucky and Tennessee, and it's a top 10 showdown. And we are underway from Rupp. Zakai Ziegler will control the tip for Tennessee. And if you need me to describe the team colors in this one, you haven't been paying much attention. This is an old school SEC rivalry. Ziegler for three and used every bit before dropping. Yeah, they come in making, what, eight threes a game. Tennessee about 33%. Not real heavy with a three ball. The man on the road. What a great way to start for double Z. No DJ Wagner in this game. And so Reed Shepard helping run the offense with his second consecutive start. Ugana Onyenso in the paint. He was a revelation in the Florida loss, but he turns it over in his first touch tonight. Right off the bat, you see Tennessee very comfortable with one-on-one -on -one defense. Jonas Adu on Onyenso. And when you don't have to double-team that low block, Tom, that is advantage to your defense. Justin Edwards is assigned Dalton Connect early, but right off the bat, Josiah Jordan-James. He had 18 in their last matchup last season on four of seven from deep and he had not been hot. That's just his second make from deep in his last 19 tries. Yeah, but Rick Barnes very clear with Josiah Jordan James this morning. You must take your open threes in this game. They're gonna back off of you, make them pay. Shot clock is late for this Kentucky team that really loves to move. A three ball from Mitchell is off the mark. Offensive board on Yenso. And a new lease on this possession for the Cats. Antonio Reeves misses the floater, and it will be Tennessee basketball. One of the top three or four defensive teams in the country are the Tennessee Volunteers. They will change up their ball screen defense. They will fight you on that defensive glass. Kentucky's first shot must be really good for the next 40 minutes. Here's Connect, his first touch on the offensive end, guarded by the freshman Edwards. James, aggressive move. Adu couldn't clean it up once. Gets it the second time. They did not shoot well in the paint in their midweek loss. Well, they missed like 10 or 11 shots right at the rim, did Tennessee. Now, South Carolina's defense had something to do with it, but you could not carve out a better start for Rick Barnes and his Vols. They bring a double, and it turns into a steal from James. The veteran Mitchell didn't handle it well. Here's Ziegler. Connect from the corner. And on Yenso with the rebound. And that tells you Tennessee concerned about the post touch of Mitchell with an early double team. Edwards off the back rim. Another offensive board. And a foul will be on the floor with 13 on the shot clock. Uh, Jonas Adu is seven feet and has really developed as an offensive rebound put back guy. He's got tremendous hand strength, Tom. And he is a load and so good at running right to the front of the rim on those shot attempts. Was bothered by some misses at the rim and fouls last time. Shepard drills it. It's like a victory lap for the first bucket for the Cats. Yeah, you got to know as the out of bounds trigger guy, Reed Shepard is so dangerous. Just a foot race to the ball and the lift for the three. Connect on the curl over Shepard. The versatility of this kid we will see all game long. 
way more than just a standstill jump shooter. Mitchell harassed with another double. Finds Reeves in the corner. It was a good look, but Reeves couldn't knock it down. Tennessee to push. Edwards to tap away. James recovers. Now Vescovy for three. Got it. What a start for Tennessee. Three of four from deep. It's a 10-point road lead for the Volunteers. And how about the effort of Josiah Jordan James to get the ball stripped from behind, but this to still pursue it. And that first shot went down for Zakai Ziegler. It got a couple of bounces and it got it to drop and just kind of seemed like it fed Tennessee early confidence on the offensive end. Well, Rick Barnes is saying, hey, we're doing some things right, but he is a perfectionist. Oh, that's, that's a bad handle right there for Reed Shepard to be chasing and Dalton Connect because of the size disadvantage that Shepard is in. And Dalton Connect is all of 6'6", and he gets to that sweet spot, which is the elbow or the nail. It is a money shot for three and orange. Usually it's the road team that has to stop the momentum and use the timeout to do so, but it's Kentucky here as the Volunteers have made five of eight from the floor. Kentucky one of five with two turnovers. Well, that was a settle down timeout by Coach Cal. And he's got young guys. It's a big time environment tonight, but they've got to settle into this game. make for the catch was a Shepard three. Here's Reeves now. Shot clock at 10. Jordan Ganey on the floor for Tennessee trying to guard Reeves. Mid-range good. He's got it all, doesn't he? Yep. He absolutely has it all. And you down him a little bit and open your hips. He is so good with that pull-up jump shot. Calipari brought three off the bench, including Fierro, who's now in charge of trying to slow down Connect. Ziegler can't get by Shepard. Here's Ganey. Lost Reeves. Couldn't return the favor. And now Ziegler. Got it. All right, thanks, Stan. 16 to 5, Tennessee with an early lead on Kentucky inside a packed house in Lexington. Zakai Ziegler had the steal and got fouled by Adu Thierro. Tom Hart alongside Jimmy Dykes is building his pack. The town is abuzz. This is a big time matchup in a series that dates all the way to 1910. Jimmy, a top 10 showdown between two conference rivals. Yeah, Tennessee has settled in this game quicker than Kentucky. Tennessee already four out of five from the three point line, Tom Hart. Zakai Ziegler knocked down a big one on the first possession. Then the, the entire offense just has opened up. And John Calipari's already had to have a timeout to calm his guys down. You mentioned it earlier. This city has felt different all day long. I've been on that Kentucky bench as an assistant coach for a couple of years, multiple times in the arena. This game feels different, and Rupp feels different. And right now, Tennessee has adjusted to the environment faster than Kentucky. There's a tinge of anxiety for both teams coming off of midweek losses, maybe more so for Kentucky. It's a great offensive team, has struggled defensively, and now they got to stop one of the true stars in college basketball, Dalton Connect. There's not a better player in college basketball than Dalton Connect right now, and he's proven that the last month. I mean, his ability to go for 30, 35 on the road is some special stuff. A big physical guard at 6'6", can punish you at the rim as a transition driver, as a half-court driver, and has a phenomenal ability to finish in traffic. His size is something that you have to handle. The rise, the release, the rotation on the ball is always there. And he is putting up historical numbers, Tom Hart, when you compare to what he's done. Yeah, this is our sonic blockbuster. He is in rarefied air with Luca Garza from 20 and Zion from March of 19. Well, and think about this. Luca Garza, National Player of the Year when he did it. Zion Williamson, National Player of the Year. Dalton Connect is chasing Zach Eady right now in that conversation. And it's not too, it's not too late or too early to think about this guy right here, to me, is the best player in college basketball overall. Zach Eady, the most dominant player, but this guy's versatility, what he's done offensively over the last four weeks. He is a lottery pick 
quickly moving up to possibly the first player taken from the college level in the next NBA draft. And he's the piece that Rick Barnes has been missing over the last six games. Connect has given him 32 points a game. Rick Barnes is an elite defensive coach. Tennessee has been a top five seed for the last five years, but they've missed and grinded out games. A go-to guy, he's the dude. He changes them in March. Uh, you project Tennessee in March should look different this year than in the past. He can bail him out of tough stretches. And the attention he's getting so far in this game, Tom, has opened up the three-point shooting for some other guys. But this guy's in constant motion. He's in phenomenal shape. John Calipari, to me, has three guys tonight that should step up and check him. And now, Fierro is the guy. Is he the physical, strong guard that can get in to connect and make life tough? You're watching ESPN Sonic Blockbuster, the third of three straight top ten showdowns on ESPN. And a fantastic crowd on hand at Rupp to take this one in in a series that was first contested in 1910. This is Connect. They switch out the freshman Bradshaw on it. That hustle by Bradshaw to get back. James had already hit one three early on, misses that one, and another offensive board for UT. Yeah, similar to what Kansas did to Houston today. They are winning every loose ball so far in this game are the Tennessee Volunteers. It's James again. That is the fifth offensive rebound for Tennessee. On six misses so far. Toby Awaka gets in the paint. Hook. Got him with the left arm. So Kentucky so far offensively, Jimmy, just two for six, an Antonio Reeves floater and a Reed Shepard three. With the lineup that's on the floor right now, where are they best in the half court? Well, it's multiple guys, and that's the that's what John Calipari has to work with. One of the most high-powered offense in college basketball. The problem is Tennessee is one of the top three or four defensive teams in the country. And the key for Tennessee in this game defensively, can they guard the ball, stay in front of the ball against the speed of these Kentucky guards? Kentucky number 10 in offensive efficiency according to Ken Palm. Tennessee second in the country in defensive efficiency. Shepard gets it. That's his second bucket. By the way, of note, DJ Wagner, the starting point guard for Kentucky, is out for the second straight game with an ankle injury. Limited practice this week. John Calipari said he won't go. Here's Jordan Ganey for three. What a start for Tennessee. Now they're making eight threes a game in conference play, and they're chasing that number right now in the first half. Rob Dillingham, instant offense off the bench for Kentucky. You cannot be lazy with your pickup point against Kentucky's guards. Dillingham, Shepard, they will shoot it deep from transition along with Reeves. Here's a look at on the floor for Tennessee, brought to you by Degree, and a falling shot drilled by Ganey, who gives him seven a game and already has five. Tennessee giving Kentucky the business early with their off-ball screening action, the best in college ball, the team in orange, at screening with pin-down action, getting into those curl jump shots. An early 11-point lead. Dillingham gives it up. This is the arrow on Connect. Onyenso fighting for the board. And a foul on the floor. The arrow's been battling a back injury, and he gets up gingerly after getting to the hardwood on that rebound. Well, a the arrow, Justin Edwards, who got the start on Dalton Connect, and Jordan Burks are the three guys that Cal worked yesterday in practice chasing Dalton Connect. So you got three guys that are six, seven, six, eight. The ability to, to put size on Connect, but it is a tough challenge and a tough cover. It's already the second on Awaka. Key reserver gives him 13 minutes a game. He'll sit and they return Jonas Adu. Tom Tennessee has really amped up their baseline out of bounds under defense this year. Very physical. You have to have a safe play just to get it in. Got a seven footer on the ball and Adu. Here's Reeves. Finds Shepard. Nothing doing. Extra pass. Dillingham. Got it. And money. Dillingham is best off the bounce, but when that ball gets to that swing, swing, man, did he shoot with confidence. Connect, challenged by Onyenso, catch the other way. Here's Reeves. Roof would have come off on that one. Ganey. And a loose ball again to the men in orange. Connect. Thinks better of going after Onyenso again. Tom Tennessee has gotten every loose ball and every loose rebound so far in this game. And now an extra pass to Mayshack, and it's an air ball. 
Connect has it with four. Couldn't find the rim, didn't get the whistle. A lot of contact. Here's a look at the lineups on the floor brought to you by Degree. And a foul on Connect at midcourt. Well, Kentucky has settled in. Starting to move that ball. You play with a hot ball and you throw strikes, you're going to get good looks. Dillingham sees a big rim. A good timeout by Calipari early because his team has responded. What a block by Onyenso. It is not easy to get to Dalton Connect. He's 6'6". He's physical at the rim. And Onyenso says, not on my watch. See where the cats go here. Dillingham has given him a couple threes. By the way, we might have the two best players in Hickory, North Carolina history in the building tonight. Yeah. Rob Dillingham with the ball in his and, hand and, and Ricky, Ricky Barnes. Barnes. Mitchell finds a wide open on Yenso. That was too easy. Tom, ball side defense will win you some games. Weak side defense will win you a title. Tennessee negligent on that time. Ziegler with the reverse. Boy, Tennessee not afraid to be in a foot race so far in this game. Dillingham contested fadeaway two. This guy's a superstar. He had 20 in the Florida loss. Big time shot. You just pat him on the butt and say well done and keep continue to play if you're Tennessee. This is breakneck pace. Both sides want to run. It may be a Kentucky advantage third in the country in scoring. Shepard from deep. And a foul on Ziegler inside trying to block out Mitchell. Tennessee led this game 8 0. Home crowd didn't have much to cheer about. They got it now. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by. You're watching ESPN Sonic Blockbuster from Rupp Arena. Tom, if you're playing Kentucky, you're going to constantly deal with on ball screens and transition. The urgency or lack of by Dalton Connect right there was glaring. You've got to know the on ball screen is coming. You've got to talk it out, but the urgency that you have to have against a Hooper like Dillingham has to be elevated for Tennessee in this building. The tides have changed. Tennessee started hot but has cooled. And John Calipari used an early timeout at the 1636 mark. Kentucky was down 10 at that time. And they've surged their way back into this. Here's Trey Mitchell guarded by Josiah Jordan James. Dillingham is combustible. He already has eight on two threes. Missed Mitchell, but Shepard there to bail him out. Shot clock of five. He'll shoot it in a second. A hop and a skip and a three, and he got it again. And a big time escape move by Dillingham in late clock. Ganey dumps it inside. Adu got it deep on Onyenso. And Adu is so good in condition to play a hard 25, 28, 30 minutes a game. Runs every single time, both directions. Antonio Reeves, fourth in the league in scoring, only has two points so far tonight. It's Dillingham who's been shouldering the offensive load. Back to zero. Onyenso had it for a moment. Mayshack with a baseline drive. That's a mismatch. James with Dillingham. Josiah Jordan James has been in a ton of big games, mm -hmm. Tom Hart. And he came in not playing his best basketball, but he's rising right now with a look in his eye like I've been here before. Wow. Shepard rejected at the rim. That was Zadu who put it back. And now Ganey transition three. Vescovy tracks it down. Bodies on the floor in front of the Kentucky bench and a whistle before the shot. I just mentioned Adu sprints both directions. The floor's not tilted. It's an equal floor for this kid. And his ability to run back and get to the ball from Shepard from behind. And watch Dillian M earlier. I talked about his ability to escape. Probably got away with a travel call because those feet didn't come down at the same time. But nevertheless, his ability, the craftiness, and the determination of zero in white. The moxie that he plays with is what you're guarding as much as anything. He has scored 11 of the last 13. Let me ask, why do you take him out at this moment when he's smoking hot? Well, Cal has, like all of us, Tom, he coaches with his gut. 
And Dillingham's a guy that maybe saw something on the defensive end for a second, but this is a game you've got to have your best players play the major minutes. Watch out. Vescovy with the turnover. This is a Kentucky team that ran out of gas at the end of that Florida game. Five players played 33 minutes or more, including Reed Shepard, who played every minute in an overtime contest. And as a Kai Ziegler being that backcourt pest that he is defensively, you can take nothing for granted when five and orange is guarding you. Kentucky will probably ball screen for Shepard to knock this pressure off that Sakai Ziggler is going to put on it. Yeah, just the threat of the smack action right there is exactly what they do. James ends up taking it away from Shepard. And it gets knocked away and out of bounds. Tennessee with the takeaway. Josiah Jordan James, you mentioned it. He'd been ice cold 5 for 28 over his last seven games. He's playing like a guy on his last trip to Rupp. And to our point, Gillingham checks back in. Now Shepard will get a quick blow. And John Calipari knows what's at stake. His team's coming in off of a loss. The intensity of these two teams in practice the past two days has been at another level. And I've been at a lot of practices for Tennessee and Kentucky over the years. This game tonight means more. Connect has been slowed down tonight. Just one for his first four. Back on the floor. No hesitation. And he splashes down his first trip. Whew. His ability off baseline out of bounds under. If you're not physical with him before the ball's handed out of bounds, that's on you for Kentucky tonight. Dillingham picks up his dribble. It's a seven nothing Tennessee run. Tapped out. And we got a stoppage over in front of the Tennessee bench. Shot clock was not reset. There's 18 seconds on it. Both teams will steal a timeout in this one. It has been a rapid start on both sides. The previous shot clock situation is under review. Like Shouse with the announcement. After the drive by Dillingham, did it hit the rim? I don't know if it did on that one, but how about connect on it out of bounds play? Well, on the baseline out of bounds under, you're not physical with him. That's not physical enough if you're Edwards. This kid is 6'6", and he is dynamic from that ball side corner position. And he's so good playing in a tight space, Tom. That's a 10 foot by three foot area in that short corner that Connect works with. And why is he hard to guard? Man, so many different things about his game. First of all, he loves ball. And he went to Rick Barnes at Tennessee because Kevin After Durant. After further review, the shot clock will be placed at 11 seconds. Thank you, Doug. But this is Dalton Connect. He does have pro lift on his jump shot. There's a difference between college and pro lift, and he's got it. He is fast, physical, and a very long finisher at the rim. And the mentality of Kevin Durant. He plays the game low for a tall guy. He shoots the ball with conviction every time. Is he going to get 35 a night? Probably not. Is he a threat to? Absolutely. And has he lately? He's come close. He had 31 in the midweek loss to South Carolina. A flurry at the end. Ten of those came in the last two minutes. His recruitment out of the transfer port on the Northern Colorado came down to Tennessee and Oregon. The Oregon coaches were blown away on his visit. They had a dinner set up. He said, no, no, I got more shots to get up. And he spent an extra two hours in the gym. That's Justin Edwards with the midi. Connect got it deep. And now Adu. Ziegler for three. Right in front of Reed. Tom, that is his spot. That high slot, particularly on the left side of the floor, Zakai Ziegler sees a really big rip. Ziegler didn't make a three in the last game when that loss to South Carolina. In fact, he was 0 for 6 from the floor. Reeves can't quite answer. Connect crossover downhill and a finish and going to the line. I just talked about he is a long finisher, explosive, physical at the rim. And this kid, you put him in ball screens, and Edwards just jumps for some reason to that 
wrong shoulder and just opens up and Dillingham just kind of hand waves. That will not work against Dalton Connect. If you're not in full body gap position, it is a fast lane drive, a straight line drive for Dalton Connect. Rick Barnes has been on his superstar for his inefficiency at the free throw line. He was just six of ten last time and he's already drawn blood and head athletic trainer Chad Newman will have to get him cleaned up. You got a minute to make sure he can do so and not have to leave the game. Tom, I was in that Tennessee film session last night for about an hour. And to your point, Dalton Connect is playing as well as anybody in college basketball. And Rick Barnes lit him up time and time again about not being physical enough as a low post score. Open up your hips defensively. Not getting into fighting with the rebound and ball on the glass. And Dalton Connect just sits there and takes it. That's why he came to Rick Barnes. And his competitive fire is at an entire another level. He is a high usage player. He takes 32% of the shots when he's on the floor. And his Tennessee team has struggled when the others just stand around and watch. And that was a case against South Carolina. Three point play for Connect, who's got five 30 point games. Five of them in only 20 games this season for Tennessee. Volunteers with their largest lead of the night. Mitchell draws the double. Dillingham working on James and long two. And Connect comes out with it. But really good by Tennessee to switch up on the floor and be there on the touch. Connect looking for an assist to Adu. And it's taken away by Justin Edwards. Out front, Dillingham, the lob. And Bradshaw couldn't find it. Oh, that was a very soft finish by Adu. It wasn't even a shot. Soft, selfish, or stupid will not be rewarded in the SEC this year on one possession. Well, this Sonic Blockbuster features two of the top scorers in the SEC, Dalton Connect, who transferred in from Northern Colorado, and Antonio Reeves, who came to Kentucky a couple seasons ago from Illinois State. They both blossomed into stars. Well, they have worked, and they have worked and worked. The number of shots they get up per week is and at a whole nother level. And these two guys are similar in their size. They're similar in their approach offensively. Reeves has the floater game. The two kids that are as hard to guard in this league as we have. Reeves hasn't had much of an opportunity so far tonight. Just one for five. He's missed all three of his threes. Meanwhile, Ziegler has scored or assisted on 22 of Tennessee's 36. That has him even with Kentucky. Kick that one out of bounds after the pressure from Dillingham. Well, really good low hands, right? By Dillingham to get low because Ziggler's only 5'10 and plays low. It's not something that Rob Dillingham is necessarily known for this season. He's known as a scorer, but Kentucky has had its struggles on the defensive end. It doesn't match up with a team that is third in the nation in scoring just shy of 89 points a game. They've given up 82 points a game in SEC play. Edwards from the elbow. Yeah, he's been good off that curl action now. That little simple pin down and that curl to that elbow. Edwards really good offensively at that spot. Here's Vescovy, the lefty kicks it out. His classmate James can't knock it down. Ellingham into the cheerleaders for the save. Shepard on Vescovy. And a follow from the freshman Bradshaw. Tom, sometimes there's value in just getting the ball up on the glass in transition, especially when there's a seven-footer like Bradshaw to clean it up. Here's Ziegler. Nice finish by Zakai Ziegler. He's got double figures. Kentucky's inability to guard the ball could really be exposed tonight. Shepard back to Mitchell. Trey Mitchell hasn't scored in this one. He usually gives him 13 a game. Edwards knocks down the three. He likes that side of the floor. Whether it's the curl into the elbow or those spot up shots, Edwards on the right side is his money. Connect lost it. Here's Dillingham on Ziegler. 
And knocked out of bounds by Vescovy. Let's take a look at our Legends of Coaching Spotlight brought to you by Principal. John Calipari is a Hall of Famer. Rick Barnes is right there. They're one and two in active winning coaches, an active winning percentage for coaches. Rick Barnes has been to 27 NCAA tournaments, one Final Four. Talking with Cal last night, he said, I want desperately for my friend to get into the Hall of Fame. I don't want him to win tomorrow, but I want him to get yeah. into the Hall of Fame. Well, they, they have tremendous love and respect for one another, Barnes and Calipari. And Rick Barnes took Adu out, was not happy with the finish at the rim, set him down for a couple of minutes. Now Jonas Adu back on the floor. Here's Reeves. This is a physical Tennessee defense. Somehow Reeves gets three. He is so good as a finisher. Best average at the rim on the team, one of the best in the league at 66%. Adu over on Yenso. Nothing. Shepard, great look ahead to Reeves. And Ziegler stole it, but they get the foul on the floor. Well, Rick Barnes not at all in agreement with the call, but watch Reeves right here. He attacks closeout so much better this year, Tom. And you try to take an angle away from him instead of squaring him up. He is those yards after contact that I talk about in this league you have to have as a driver. That's where Reeves has really progressed. He is the SEC's active leader in points. With 2,076, Ziegler gets a breather. Number two, Jordan Ganey has given Tennessee some valuable minutes over the last couple of weeks. Transfer from USC Upstate. Here's Reeves. Reverse snow. Saves out top to Dillingham. James collects his own miss. Here's Vescovy. Connect guarded by Dillingham. He's got a size advantage. Shot like a three. Out of bounds off Dillingham. Four tenths of a second remaining on the shot clock. That may have been one of Kentucky's best defensive efforts of the season. Yeah, it was because Connect reloaded and got some momentum coming downhill. Now, the obvious thing right here is take away the lob threat. To Adu. Connect is also a great leaper. On Yenso with a hand on Adu at the elbow. And a shot clock violation forced by Kentucky. Tom, the save of the basketball by Reeves and the awareness to not just throw it back in off someone's legs, but to find Dillingham up top, that is next level stuff. And interesting Reeves at one point wasn't sure he would come back to Kentucky this year and that freshman class got together with him on a group text and said you're the missing part to what we want to do this year. Big time play by Reeves. Kentucky on a 12 to 2 run fight their way back in this game. Cameron Carr on the floor for uh, for Tennessee for the first time. And Adu secures the rebound. Stolen away by Shepard, leading the league in steals. Vescovy fights for it. Tennessee wins the scramble. James the jam! The loose ball fight by Tennessee. The difference in this game so far. Reeves, no. Onyenso, no. Carr up high to get it. Yeah, this is a back and forth affair. Josiah Jordan James has nine early. John Calipari's got to use another timeout. From the opening tip, Tennessee has won the 50 50 balls on the glass. 
and in a loose ball situation and then scrambles. And look at Vescovy right here, refusing to give up on the play. And then terrific job by Josiah Jordan James with a finish. Josiah Jordan James is back. That high release has been a trademark under Barnes. Josiah Jordan James just drops it. All right, thanks, guys. I think Josh Pastor once bought a snow cone machine from John Calipari in Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. The other way around. Here's Dillingham for three. This kid is nuclear. He's got 17 already. That's three more than his game average. How about the action by Cal coming out of that timeout? Get a little misdirection going one way and pop Dillingham right back off of it. Three ball the other side. On the end, so the board. He's been a revelation for the Cats lately. Making his second straight start tonight. Dillingham draws the foul. Now Dillingham with 17 points in this first half. And he drives it and just pops right back off of it. And the ball movement for Kentucky, when it's hot and they're throwing strikes, they are a dangerous, dangerous team. About as dangerous as we have in the college game. Well, Wednesday against Florida, he had 20 for the entire game. He's got 17 tonight. I had a conversation with Rob after shoot around today. He's such a good creator. He only has assists on 69% of his made threes. The team average is 85%. He said he struck this balance as a youngster being a lead guard and also looking for your shot. Played at Donda Academy. That's Kanye School out in California. That was a team of superstars. And he said after being the dominant player on my teams before then I had to learn to serve others and pick and choose where I could find my shot. Here's Ganey fumbled the pass kicks it to the corner. Up the top of the backboard. Shepard great transition passer to Reeves. And a lid on that side for Kentucky missed opportunities in the run game. Ganey dumps it for Adu. The hands of Adu are tremendous. I mean, he will catch good passes, bad passes, such a soft set of paws right there in front of the rim. Reeves, ball fake, steps into a three. They need him tonight. That's his first triple. That Josiah Jordan James just got lost. I mean, Reeves just worked off of the screen and found himself wide open in the corner. Vescovy tees one up, got fouled by Dillingham, and he'll be shooting three. That is the second on Rob Dillingham. Vescovy has a knack to know when the defender guarding him is off balance and contact's going to come to get that shot up. That was a three-point attempt to get himself to the free throw line, and it pays off. Such a high IQ kid, Vescovy, right there. He saw Dillingham was jumping towards him, so he rises up, and the contact occurs. Santiago Vescovy is third in Tennessee program history. He has made 313 threes. The guys in front of him, named Lofton and Houston. Those guys were buckets. Rick Barnes says that Vescovy and Josiah Jordan James are the two most unselfish guys he's ever known. Therefore, a guy like Connect can come in, start being your primary shot taker, and it blends beautifully in this Tennessee culture. Connect back on the floor. Vescovy's got one more coming his way. 81% from the free throw line of the season for Santiago Vescovy, who's from Montevideo, Uruguay. Played at the NBA Academy in Mexico City before coming to Knoxville. Two out of three. Tennessee has been able to keep Kentucky at arm's length after starting this game with an 8 nothing run. Shepard looking for Reeves. He's got Adu on him. Mid-range is good. He's got nine. He is a tough cover. You get the mismatch right there. And Adu pretty good defensively. 
But just the step back ability by Reeves to create space over the length. Really well done. On their feet at Rupp Arena. Connects. With plenty of time left. 12 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Mitchell picks him up and forces it out of bounds. Ball screen defense has been poor for Kentucky this season. They won that one. It's gotten better in this half. And you're going to pick your battles against Connect, but you you put him with multiple jerseys surrounding him, and he's got to read the floor and move that ball. Shot clock is off. Shepard now with eight. Here's Edwards. The senior Reeves to Mitchell with one challenge jumper are no good. Empty possession for Kentucky to close the half, but it's only a four point lead for Kentucky. A lead at one point that was 14. Sakai Ziegler with 13, perfect from three. Rob Dillingham has 17. He's made. You're watching ESPN Sonic Blockbuster from a sold out Rump Arena. The stars of the night have been relatively quiet. Tennessee leads by four at the half against number 10, Kentucky. Dalton Connect is the top scorer for this Tennessee team. He's averaging 32 over his last six games. But so far in this one, he's been held in check just eight points on seven shots. And Antonio Reeves, fourth leading scorer in the league, only with nine points so far tonight. Both of those guys seem like they're due. Tom Hart alongside Jimmy Dykes. That could happen any moment, as we know, for both of them. Meanwhile, the scoring load has been picked up by a couple of other guys. It has a high-level game, by the way, to finish off what has been a high-level day in college basketball overall. The offensive production has been really good for a couple of guys against pretty good defense. Dillingham in particular, he is so confident. A guy that is wired to score has never been fearful or afraid for one minute in that Kentucky uniform in his first year. He just has the ability to get, to get loose against a good defensive team like Tennessee. And Zakai Ziegler has taken this team and his voice in the last week, Tom, has started to grow. Now, he's been the DNA of this Tennessee program since the time he stepped on campus, but he has kind of drawn a line and said, your guys are going to follow me. Well, he delivered early in this game from an offensive standpoint. Interesting, both those guys have two fouls. You want to stay out of foul trouble these first four or five minutes. If you're double Z or Dillingham, you're too important offensively right now. Good offensive first half. Tennessee 1.3 points per possession. Kentucky 1.2. Now we're ready for the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup, the third straight of three top ten matchups. Home team won each of the first two. Kansas shot the lights out against the best defensive team in the country in Houston to start at Allen Fieldhouse in North Carolina. Held on, played great defense against Duke. Onyenso had his hands on it, and a loose ball foul will go against the Kai Ziegler. Here's our big Monday doubleheader. We start in the ACC with Miami and UVA in Charlottesville at 7 Eastern. And it's round one of this season's Sunflower Showdown. Hunter Dickinson and number eight Kansas square off against Camp Carter and Kansas State. Both also available on the ESPN app. Tom, it doesn't matter if you're UConn, Purdue, Kansas, Houston, Tennessee. If you have a legitimate shot to get to the Final Four, you've got to get better in the month of February. And whether that's getting healthy or just playing better in certain spots, but no team right now is a finished product, nor should they be. But a little surprise after that scramble, that foul was charged to Trey Mitchell. And I say that look at Houston today. They've got to get better offensively when they get against a team like Kansas that moves the ball against their defense. Well, Kansas with its 18th consecutive win at home against a higher ranked team. You just don't walk into that building. Three on three. Shepard pops and got it. The ability to stop and elevate is so underrated for guards. And Reed Shepard has that part of the game down pat. I mean, he brings this thing with force. But the ability to stop under control and on balance into his jump shot. They do again, just not a strong finish at the rim. And watch Reed Shepard. He brings it, bam, stops, gets himself on balance, straight up, straight.
straight down. Really well done by 15 in white. Cats have not led in this game. Tennessee jumped out to an 8 0 lead. Here's Connect on the drive with his left hand, followed jam by Jonas Adu. He attacked so much attention, does connect to the ball. And good job by Rick Barnes to get Adu opposite of where the drive was going to go to be there for the weak side board. Shepard got a half step on Ziegler. Now dumps it for Onyenso. Tried to share it. James takes it himself. Game of Tennessee once led by 14. Tom, watch this play call by Rick Barnes to get Connect going to his left, but he gets Adu in that right dunker spot, knowing that that weak side offensive glass rebound is probably going to come into play. Also teased on Yenso, who's coming off of a career high eight blocks on Wednesday against Florida to come over and help. Mitchell and Vescovy in a fist fight down on the block. Vescovy keeps it alive and finds the basketball. He's got elite hands. Ball fake. Kick out to Ziegler. And Shepard with the block. James will try. Got the mulligan and made him pay. How good has Josiah Jordan James been in this game? Man. 12 points now. Onyenso corrals the miss. Kentucky with 18 second chance points this evening. Reeves drives on James. High off the window. Tennessee likes to bear hug the ball defensively is how they teach it. Reeves had no part of it. Went right past the bear down the left side. Vescovy, splash again. Vescovy has knocked down both of his three-point attempts in this one. Preseason first team all-conference, but just really hadn't hit his stride over the course of the season. Edwards with a step. Vescovy got his hands on it. It'll be Kentucky basketball. Next time out for Kentucky is Tuesday night over in the SEC Network and the ESPN app, part of a college basketball doubleheader that starts at 6.30. Cats will be on the west end to take on the Vandy team that found its first conference win of the day earlier today against Mizzou. That's 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Here's Dillingham, step back over Connect. Dillingham and Fierro just checked into the game for the Cats. Adu, rebounded by Fierro. Reeves into Ziegler, and we got a jump ball to take a possession to Tennessee, John Calipari. Is hopping mad in front of the Kentucky bench. But Tom, what a tremendous open floor defensive play by Zakai Ziegler to continue to move his feet. He gets that ball up top, absolutely. And it is very difficult to stay in front of Reeves. Now Calipari getting a warning from Doug Shouse, and careful he doesn't get teed up. Earlier this game in the first half, Cal came all the way to midcourt. Shouse pointed him back to the bench. Bench decorum has been a point of emphasis for college basketball officials this season. Ganey inside the line for two. And a foul on the floor. Tennessee leading by seven under 16 timeout. He is. Welcome back to Rupp Arena in the SEC on ESPN. It's a top 10 showdown. Tennessee with a seven point lead on the road against Kentucky. Dickie B has been watching some great basketball today. He texted me to say he was impressed by Kansas and Carolina and a reminder of his basketball bash. Fans can go to his house to watch the Sweet 16. 
Register for the raffle at v.org slash super16. Thank you. We miss you. This will be a great game for you. I know you're enjoying it. Back home of Florida, here's Josiah Jordan James. What a game for James. First name from the Bible, second name from Hoops, Josiah Jordan James. He was a McDonald's All-American and a five-star recruit, and he's playing like it tonight. Yeah, Rick Barnes really challenged Santi and Josiah Jordan James last night in that film, talking about we've been in big games before, and it's time for us to all step up collectively. Josiah Jordan James heard the message well. Mitchell's having an off night tonight. Yeah, his mom named him Josiah after the Bible. His dad said, okay, give me MJ for a middle name. That's where the Jordan came from. Ziegler with the finish. What a game for Zakai Ziegler at a Long Island, New York. And what a seal off by Awaka. A screen assist to just open it up for Zakai Ziegler. Eight nothing Tennessee run to open up a 12 point advantage. Here's Reeves. That's a two. Shepard kept it alive for Fierro. And a finger roll. First bucket for Adu Fierro. Uh, Adu Fierro is a deluxe cutter, driver, glass guy. Here's James. Shepard pulls it out. He is a great look ahead passer. And Fierro draws the foul. Calipari thought it should have been intentional. Take a look at these last two Tennessee hoops. Zakai Ziegler just plays so low and just throws strikes, man. He doesn't throw bad passes to shooters. Watch the seal off. Bam, right there by a walk. It just moves Mitchell out of the way. Stays low and carves out space for Zakai to drive. Zakai Ziegler <laughs> combine it. <laughs> he plays so fast, it's hard to say his name sometimes. Here's Fierro, who had missed a couple of games with a back injury. James sits with his personal foul. And changing up the ball, this is number 15, Jemai Mason. The freshman, Bradshaw, replaces Mitchell in the paint for Kentucky. Another one for Fierro. Well, Kentucky is making Dalton Connect work in this game. And the last two practices, there was more attention in the scout towards Dalton Connect than I've ever seen under John Calipari back-to-back -back days. Leaves the three short. Alaka tracked down the miss. And then he got fouled. Either Shepard or Bradshaw. That'll be Reed Shepard's first. Kentucky not buying into the philosophy. Let Dalton Connect get his 30 or 35 and hold everybody else. They, they have the full attention of three and orange in this game. Connect. Wow. All alone on the back cut. Georgia eight Kentucky up with a similar play in their game here a couple of weeks ago. I'm just a soft defensive play by Kentucky that those plays will not be rewarded in this league. No sky hook for Rob Dillingham. He's got 19. An efficient game for Dillingham. Ziegler, nobody stops the basketball. That early ball screen on ball action. If you guess wrong, Zakai Ziegler is going to be at that rim when you blink. And now Fierro with the drive, and he's able to pick up a foul. That Tennessee very aggressive and connect. That's a pretty good screen by Ganey, and Adu Fierro just not ready to play, not down, not physical. And there's that on ball action. As Akai Ziegler rejects, you got a shooter in the corner you can't come off of. Really good early offense by the Vaults. The arrow is able to draw the foul. So, my Mayshack with the foul. He has scored or assisted on 37 of Tennessee's 61 points. He's got his fingerprints all over this game. He had his fingerprints all over my hand today, teaching me the players only Tennessee handshake. Well, how, why I can't would he share tell it with you? you. I, I'm not sure, but I am part of the brotherhood now. Shot clock winding down, Dillingham. Shot clock at one, and Ziegler challenged him. 
a shot clock violation for Kentucky. Only the fourth shot clock violation of the season for these Wildcats. Tennessee just the team to shut you down. Not sure there is a better on-ball defender than Zakai Ziegler, especially late clock. And he bear hugs that ball and stays square, doesn't reach, doesn't lunge. Five in orange is a problem defensively. Ziegler all along, back to connect for three. Don Connect not having his best night shooting the ball, but another offensive rebound. The 16th of the night, and here we go. Bradshaw not backing down. Tobey, Awaka, and Aaron Bradshaw going nose to nose. This is a rivalry. It dates all the way back to 1910, and a frustrated Kentucky fan base lets everybody know how they feel about the scrum. Officials trying to sort this out. It was originally started by Dillingham and then Bradshaw with a push in the back of Awaka. Well, there's not a problem until there, in my eyes, with Bradshaw coming in from behind. We see guys get tangled up all the time in a tie ball, neither one's willing to give loose. So this th this contact doesn't bother me initially, but Bradshaw here. We'll get an explanation. This the previous dead ball play is under review. <laughs> Doug Shouse, KB Burdett, and Vladimir Voyard-Tadal are officiating crew tonight. I know we have a common foul on White, and they will be looking at what transpired afterwards. Look at Doug Shouse doing heavy work, pulling Bradshaw away. This game has felt different all day long in Lexington, Kentucky. The buzz, the energy, the urgency on full display in rough an hour before game time. And the heat in the building has only escalated throughout this game. They have not announced who the original personal foul was on. I think it was Dillingham with the reach. And you think we could see a technical on Bradshaw for the shove, or do they just let it move on. No, they will not let that move on. I think that's a dead ball contact technical foul on Bradshaw. And there's the, there's a the common foul, but then neither guy's willing to let loose the ball. I'm okay with that, but the, the push by Bradshaw I think will be penalized. Will they come back and get a walk as well? There has been an extra emphasis on sportsmanship this season. So going beyond what we saw from the physical confrontation, there are certain words which will earn you an automatic technical, which also may be in play here. And it looks like we got, if you got to write it down, that's a CBS receipt coming here in a moment in terms of who got in trouble and who did. But regardless of what the ultimate judgment could be, could this be a momentum boost for Kentucky? Could be. Down 10, 12, 41 to go. They need something good to happen. Could be a momentum boost for Tennessee. chow has got everybody's order for Big Blue Deli. And by today, they closed at 3. I showed up at 3.05. That's just a bad day. <laughs> These two teams have final four aspirations coming in off of a loss. We knew we would see a desperate effort by both ball clubs, which we have. Come on, these type plays, all three officials want to get a look at it, how they rotate through there. After further 
for review. We have a common foul on two during the live ball. During the dead ball period, we have quadruple contact technical fouls. Two on Kentucky, two on Tennessee. On Kentucky, it's number two and number zero. On Tennessee, it's 11 and number two. Those plays will offset. We will resume play on the baseline with orange ball, Tennessee ball on the baseline. And to my point about the verbal that they're trying to clean up, that could be why Jordan Ganey picked one up as well. So that will be, by the way, the third personal on Bradshaw, who will now sit. All, all the penalties occur after the common foul is called right there. If nothing else happens, we're shooting free throws and continuing to play. But the push from behind, Awaka comes back in, Ganey gets involved. Two and zero in white, 11 and two in orange. And all those quadruple, I've never heard that used before, the, the, the quadruple technical fouls are offsetting. Jimmy, talk about the importance for this officiating crew in a rivalry game to try to stop the extra stuff right here so it doesn't continue for the next 1241. Well, they have to, absolutely they have to. So it's not just what they're seeing at the monitor, it's a message that they now relay to both huddles. This game is not going to cool down. This Tennessee-Kentucky rivalry is the real deal. And this game has major implications in terms of seeding for that NCAA tournament, the chase to stay in that SEC race. What you don't want to do right now if you're Kentucky or Tennessee is back down with your aggressiveness. You've learned your lesson, but you've got to ramp it right back up in terms of how hard you are playing in this game. Look, Shouse will read the deli order to Jimmy. So the key is those technical fouls offset. Rob Dillingham for Kentucky. So it's a 10-point Tennessee lead. And Tennessee will have the basketball after the foul. But the key that Doug Shiles just told you is that all those technicals offset. Now you still pick up a personal foul if you're any of the guys who got caught. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Those dead ball contact technical fouls were also assessed a personal foul. A terrific job by Doug Shiles, those guys to step in. That thing could have escalated in an ugly direction really quickly. Does this stoppage benefit either side? I, Tom, I don't think it does. I mean, again, my point from a coaching standpoint is you've got to get your guys together right now and, and talk about discipline and not crossing the line. But you cannot come out of this break in a passive, non-fighting mentality. It's a Tennessee team that at one point led by 14. They are undefeated 15-0 this season when holding a double-digit lead at any point in the game. In fact, They've won 51 straight games when leading by double digits. They haven't lost since December of 21. This stoppage has lasted nearly 10 minutes. Bradshaw comes off the floor. Onyenso replaces him inside the building. Starting to come alive again. Better tag connect, right? There he is, a once again, a point-blank look. How can you let that happen? you got to be physical, force him to where your help is. I mean, the exact same play connect at the rim. Georgia 8, Kentucky up in their next game against South Carolina. The Gamecocks did the exact same thing. It's been a weakness for them on the baseline out-of-bounds all season. Reeves will go to the free-throw line. And what's Dalton Connect in this triangle set to start with? He's up top. And Dalton Connect is faking like he's going to the corner, like he's going to get screened up for, but he just sticks that right foot and makes a hard, violent cut to the front of the rim. And Kentucky has given away four points in baseline out of bound under. And so Antonio Reeves to the free throw line. Knocks one down. Reeves. Second best in the SEC at 88% from the free throw line. Chicago native, man, they've had some great talent from the Windy City in this program. Tyler Eulis now on the coaching staff. Former SEC Player of the Year, Anthony Davis, National Player of the Year. Reeve told me today he takes 800 shots a day outside of practice. 5,600 shots a week mm. to get him ready to play two games. That's the type of work ethic that you've got to have to become special. 
Ziegler is able to draw the foul. And he'll go to the free throw line as Dillingham picks up his fourth. Remember, the technical was Dillingham's third. So that is very costly for their leading scorer now to pick up his fourth with still 12.07 to play. And with no DJ Wagner, that guard depth could become a question mark for Kentucky in this game. Come on, ESPN. Kawhi and the Clippers play the sixth of a seven game road trip. They're four and one so far. They want to get Jimmy Butler in the heat, trying to snap a seven game losing streak. Two teams going in separate directions. Coverage begins at six Eastern, three Pacific. How about Kentucky, by the way? Seven All Stars? John Calipari said, I'm not going to rest till we have 12. I want half of the world's greatest players in that feature to be coming from Kentucky. Well, he has half of one team right now. I mean, the previous record was four, also by Kentucky. Andrew Shepard. If he has any airspace at all, it is money. Catch down nine. Fan base trying to will him to a stop. Ziegler has other ideas. Edwards the board. Without Dillingham, this could be Shepard's time to take over this game in the right way. He or Reeves, either one, is your primary weapons. Edwards wants in on the front. He made a three in the first half. Didn't love it. Did not love that shot at all by Edwards in the shot clock. Meshack trying to Barkley his way in. First bucket for Jemai Meshach. Exactly what it did. His left shoulder into your chest is that Barkley bump. Kentucky got caught in a bad match in transition, and Tennessee went right at it. Any moves named after Jimmy Dykes? Not zero. <laughs> Thankfully. See how they bear hug the ball? They get so wide and low guarding the ball, Tennessee does. Yarrow got Connect. And that is the third on Dalton Connect. It's the SEC on a Saturday night against two top ten teams. The rivalry is has been fierce. Rick Barnes, by the way, is a winning record against Cal since he's been at Tennessee. This thing is going to go down to the wire. The series began in 1910 between the border rivals. It is as intense in any Kentucky swept two last year, knocked off fifth ranked Tennessee, trying to do the same tonight, but the Volunteers have led from the jump. Only seven wins in Rupp Arena all time. Three of them belong to Rick Barnes, three and five in this building since he took over Tennessee. Well, he's brought in good teams in here before and they've gotten smashed. And they were down 20 at the half just last year, but this team is different. And I know Dalton Connect hasn't had big numbers, but the attention that he gets has made other guys offensive weapons tonight. And Kentucky right now, Dillingham on the bench with four fouls. Shepard and Rees have got to be really good until Dillingham checks back in. Offensively, those two guys have to be 1A and 1B on the play call. When is the right time to bring Dillingham back? I, I, I think Cal is trying to maybe get to the eight minute mark. I mean, then from a coach's standpoint, it's kind of what you think about. And if you can keep it at an eight or nine game, you, you keep him over there. But boy, that pistol action, those two guards coming at you, they call it pistol action. Very difficult to stay in front of. Kentucky did a good job. Hey, Shaq driving up the arrow. Basket, he gets by Shepard. And lost it out of bounds, knocked out by Kentucky. Now, surely Kentucky will not give up another baseline out of bounds under play. And Connect is not in the game, but other guys can run to the rim. The guy out of bounds under Shepard, guarding the ball, has his back to the passer. And a whistle on the perimeter. That's going to go against the arrow and Tennessee in the bonus with 10:25 to play. And Meshack at that free throw line on the Dalton Connect's official visit to Tennessee. Dalton Connect and Meshack played one on one, and Meshack walked away from that, telling Coach Barnes, "This is the type of competitor that fits our culture." Well, there's not a better way to find out than going against Meshack one on one, right? That's right. That was a huge rebound by Ganey. And put 15 on the shot clock. 
I mentioned the Oregon coaches talking about Connect's visit before he then visited Tennessee and committed. They couldn't get him out of the gym. That's a good sign. That's how he's been since he went to junior college. And now he's gained 14.8 pounds, I was told, prior to the game. And his explosiveness connect is up 25% just since he's been in Knoxville. Wow, that's an explosive jam by Awaka. Tom, I think that was an empty corner action. I was kind of shielded by the official, but another really smart play call by Barnes to get Toby Awaka. I think he set a screen and then rolls out of it with the, no one in the corner. Is that corner empty for Awaka? Yeah, look at that, clears it out. Now there's just no help. And Onyenso steps up just enough and allows Awaka to get behind him. Trey Mitchell to the free throw line. Mitchell has not made a shot, doesn't have a point in this one. He's got four boards though. And he misses the front end. A collective groan throughout the building here at Rupp. Down 11, under 10 to play. Tennessee has won 51 consecutive games with a double-digit lead. This is Awaka going to work. Speed sometimes beats length, and that's exactly what Awaka put on him. So quick with his shoulders. Shepard off balance, empty possession for Kentucky. The few souls in here that are wearing orange in the stands are feeling more emboldened with every Tennessee stop. Tom, Tom watch a Waka. I mean, he's 6'7", but he plays so low. He rolls out of this thing, bam, and gets right into Onyenso right there, and speed beats length on this play. Just gets right around, a little bit of a whip move by a Waka. His rebound rate last year was as good as anybody in the country per minutes played. That is his oxygen on that glass. Vescovi for three. Big jumper from Santiago Vescovi. Tennessee has opened up its largest lead of the game, up 16. Kentucky's baseline out-of-bounds defense has cost them 10, 12 points in this game when you go back to the first half. Piero falling out of bounds, gets it to Shepard. And now Reeves able to finish. It's not easy to get Tennessee in a defensive rotation, but you got to do it. You got to find the second or third side of the floor. They do, and Reeves eats it up. Meanwhile, Ziegler's got a double double 19 points and 11 assists. You said they're going to wait to the under eight if they could to get Dillingham in. With every passing second, the pressure on returning him gets greater. Ziegler short. And a foul on the rebound will go against Awaka. How about Santiago Vescovi with a little swagger? This is the baseline out of bounds. Everybody asleep. Vescovi drills the three and blows a kiss courtside. Okay. <laughs> Santi Vescovi. The the lights, the stage, the event is never too big for this kid. Uh, he has had to play the point guard at times, and he's been moved off the ball to the two guard. Sometimes he started and has not been a key guy, but Rick Barnes trusts his preparation, he trusts his heart, he trusts his ability to, to protect the culture of Tennessee as well as anyone that Rick Barnes has had. Piero knocks the first one down. He's been a regular since he arrived on campus Four and a half seasons ago. Well, Cal got close, and he got to the 828 mark, right? Gillingham back in the game now. He's clapping at Dillingham and giving him some last-second instruction. Make plays, make plays. He's their playmaker. Deficit is 12. Connect off the screen. Iverson cut. Ziegler can't get it to him. Now Vescovi filling in behind, finds Adu. Vescovi the lefty, kicks it out, James. And it's rebounded by Bradshaw. Dillingham to Fierro. Well, Bradshaw really went over the back, he's playing with three fouls. We got a tight one, the under eight timeout at Rupp Arena, Tennessee in this rivalry game. Leaves by a dozen on the road against number 10, Kentucky.
Rick Barnes returned a veteran core to this year's edition of Tennessee basketball. And these balls for life, Sakai Ziegler, Santiago Vescovi, and Josiah Jordan James gave them an instant lift in a true road venue tonight. Rick Barnes told his club last night, Tom, in that film session, I want us confident and nasty in February in the right way. Those three guys understand that message more than anybody else. Double Z, Josiah Jordan James, and Vescovy. And Tennessee, for the most part, has won that part of the game tonight. And still enough time left for Kentucky, but offensively, where are they going to find it? Gillingham, Shepard, they're up against one of the top three defenses in the country that are, that's locked in. How about the play for Vescovy tonight? Four straight games and double figures after he only had three in the prior 11. Whatever slump he was in, whatever struggles he was dealing with, he has cast those to the side tonight, and he has come out on fire in the second half. Well, it speaks to the strength of Tennessee in March because this is a big, big-time game, and Dalton Connect only 12 points. Other guys in double figures, a complete team effort so far for Tennessee. Tennessee has to continue to value the ball. They only have seven turnovers really clean on their offensive end, not allowing Kentucky to get out in transition. Ziegler able to get all the way to the paint. Here's James. Mid-range jumper goes for Josiah Jordan James. He's got 17 in this one. Simple shot fake. Gets himself to the elbow. Straight up, straight down. He has been so good at that elbow pull up in this game. Dillingham lets it fly. In and out. Save to connect. Talk with Zakai Ziegler about connecting his instant impact. He said the first time we laced him up, we realized this guy was a dude. He said, I've never seen anybody like him. Not in the playgrounds back in New York, not in my AAU time, nowhere else. Mitchell is able to find the miss. Tennessee is out. Score Kentucky by 10 this half. Dillingham drills it. When you play drop coverage, you're going to get that shot up, and that's what Adu did. He dropped off a little bit, and good guards will make you pay. Vescovy behind the screen. Bradshaw finds a rebound. James really stole it back. Picked up his dribble, and it turns nearly into a turnover. Eventually, a reach-in foul on Jonas Adu. Yeah, just not a smart foul by Adu. I mean, you can put Kentucky in a short clock, and you bail him out, reaching from behind at the 20-foot mark. we got a women's basketball triple header for you tomorrow on ESPN2, and the app it starts in Chapel Hill. For 17, Virginia Tech taking on number 24, North Carolina. Then an SEC showdown, Don Staley's number one wing South Carolina team hosts Ole Miss. And we finish on the West Coast, UCLA and Stanford in another top 10 matchup. 39 and three. What's that? South Carolina combined men's and women's team. Lamont Paris <laughs> at 19 and three, Don's kids at 20 and 0, 39 and three. South Carolina basketball on the year. When South Carolina knocked off Kentucky in a midweek game a couple of weeks ago, Don Staley rushed the floor. He had a court storming and she was leading the students, getting them fired up to do it. <laughs> I wonder if she helped pay the fine. But it was <laughs> she she could have paid the entire fine, by the <laughs> That's way. Right. Well, Lamont Paris is SEC coach of the year right now. We're halfway at the halfway point, but things would have to go south in a hurry for that vote not to hold up. Here's Adu. The D by Bradshaw straight up. Dillingham off balance, shoes the left. But he can make hard shots at the rim. He's so crafty and so confident. Kentucky is not done, I'm telling you. And Tennessee better be clean with the ball and keep moving the ball and taking good shots. Connect. Is that a good shot? For him, it was a little early in the shot clock, but I trust him at the elbow. Shepard for three. Yep. Got it! You can just feel it. And Rick Barnes can, too. Is he going to take a timeout or play on? I think he's going to burn it, absolutely. And just like that. Cats have cut it to seven. 
Dillingham and Shepard leading the way. A 7-0 run. Dillingham playing with four fouls. His ability to do that. Wrong foot, wrong hand. Away from the rim shots. And the three ball by Shepard. This Kentucky team is young, but man, do they fight. Dillingham came back in with 8.25 to go in the half. And his offensive punch has got this game closed down. His ability to drive and make those hard, tough twos at the rim. He's also moved the ball well. I mean, he's got four assists in this ball game. He's played 22 minutes. He got 25 points. He's doing it all. And for a young guy in this situation, with the pressure on in a big time game, to say, I've got this, is really something special. And Rupp Arena now is right back in this game. Ziegler's got a career high 12 assists tonight. Ball back in his hands. Here's Vescovy to James. Shot clock at six. James through traffic. You talk about fighting for your spot as an offensive player. Josiah Jordan James just did it. The will to get that shot off was unguardable. Shepard and one. Watch your side, Jordan James, to start with. And Kentucky has swallowed him up right here. Aduthier was a very physical, tough defender. And Josiah Jordan James just wills the ball in, but then right back at you, Reed Shepard gets the mismatch in transition. A bad matchup is better than no matchup, but that time Kentucky reads it quickly. This kid is. Tommy's mean, so good at changing speeds and directions with the ball. Makes him about a, probably a step, a step and a half faster than what he normally probably is. A rare miss at the free throw line. He's making him at an 80% clip this season. Gonna see using a lot of clock in these possessions. Ziegler got right past Dillingham, contested by Bradshaw. Wow. Somehow he beat the buzzer. They're going to take a look at it. If it stands, it's the 20th and most creative point of the night for Sakai Ziegler. Tom, the awareness of Ziegler, but the quick hands. The quick hands of Ziegler, how, how fast he got this thing off his paws. That's a bucket. So that takes us to the media timeout. They're telling us after they take this review. 4:09 remaining. Plenty of drama left in the third of our three consecutive top ten showdowns. After further review, the shot is good. You heard it. Tennessee builds its lead. Ziegler's a magician. Well, his 21 points and 12 assists, but point number 20 and 21. The awareness, first of all, but how quick the little guy got the ball in and out of his hands. And he knew right away that that basket was good. A big two points to keep this lead at nine. And where does John Calipari want to go with this ball? I mean, can you open the lane like the lane's on fire and get Dillingham downhill would be ideal. He finds Bradshaw on the slip and Shepard playing hot potato with it. It's not clean passing. Reeves able to bank it in. He's got 17. By the way, the 2010 point assist double double for Sakai Ziegler is the first in conference play for Tennessee in the last 20 years. You judge guards by how good they are on the road in big games. Sakai Ziegler has checked that box. By the way, Gonzaga St. Mary's airing right now on ESPNU. We'll get there, you there as soon as we finish here. Mayshack with a follow. In these games, man, the, the game begins when the shot's taken, and Mayshack just wins that battle. No one puts a hit on Mayshack. Darrow will take it himself, and with the ball fake, he's able to draw the foul. We've had a thrilling day in the SEC. Alabama put 99 on the board to move to 7-1 and one in the league. South Carolina and Auburn win again. Auburn did it on the road against Ole Miss. Tennessee and Kentucky 
right in the thick of things, but everybody looking up at Nate Oates' team. Now, Nate Oates has won four of the seven trophies that the SEC has handed out since he's been the head coach. Two regular season titles and an SEC tournament title. They got a big one on Wednesday, the rematch against Auburn. And South Carolina, what a story they are to be picked dead last. And Lamont told me this week, my guys are letting me coach them. Man, what a, what a simple statement that is, but how important it is as well. Missed free throws hurting Kentucky, eight point Tennessee lead. That's just nine of 15 from the free throw line. Ziegler kicks to James with a shot clock at two, a contested three. Josiah Jordan James having a resurgence tonight with 22. Hey, Tom, in the second half, Tennessee has worked that clock down, wait, waiting for a Kentucky breakdown defensively. And they've capitalized on it more times than not. Blocked by Adu. Tennessee has tied a season high with 12 threes in this game. Shepard commits his second. Watch the Kai Ziegler, late clock, but he gets a piece of the paint. Josiah Jordan James into that sidestep three that all those perimeter players from Tennessee use so well. The shot fake, the sidestep, Vescovy is the master at it. Josiah Jordan James right there behind him. So James to the free throw line. There have been some absolute thrillers in college basketball today. This weekend without the NFL opposite, there was a buzzer beater waved off in Waco tonight. Baylor held on against Iowa State 70 to 68. Very impressed with Kansas today, not only to beat Houston, but how they did it to move the ball against a ferocious defense in Kansas 40 to 24 advantage on the glass. Mm. That is a statement. Dillingham contested two, got it to go. It's still not over. Tennessee's got to stay tight with the ball. You, you finish off these last two minutes like there are no officials if you're Tennessee. Expect contact, play through it. Career high 25 for Rob Dillingham. Shepard the reach in, gambled. Not the worst thing, it'll stop the clock at 148. Cal coaching him up, 148 to play. And that sustained mental slash physical toughness to play an entire defensive possession is still an area of growth for Kentucky. Ziegler's got one more coming, Tennessee. Seven of ten from the free throw line as a squad tonight. Ziegler, 21 points, 13 assists, only two turnovers. Tom, think about this, Josiah Jordan James has been an 11-12 point score for his career. Yeah. A career high tonight, 24 points. That's right. Ziegler with the takeaway, reach in by Reeves. Well, with all the shuffling at the top in college basketball, the consistency that Tennessee has shown under Rick Barnes has them squarely in the discussion for a one seed. They're not there yet, but they're in the discussion. They, they are in the schedule, allows them to stay in that discussion. That's the strength of the SEC this year. They are tracking nine teams as of right now for that NCAA tournament. It could grow to 10. So that resume for Tennessee, it's all in front of them right now, but they're on the verge of a monster, monster win in Rupp. Rick Barnes will pull off another stunner if they can hold on for the last 90 seconds. Dillingham down the lane. Career night for Dillingham, but will it be off or not? Ziegler through traffic in the backcourt. Tennessee scoring 1.3 points per possession. They have just eaten up Kentucky tonight. On the verge of reaching the century mark. And once again, Kentucky giving up 90 points. And that is a problem going forward for this Kentucky team. This kid, yeah, he's our Voya player of the game, Sakai Ziegler. And you could have also made a case for Josiah Jordan James, but Sakai Ziegler, he started the game off with that high slot three and shot it with confidence. And from there, just fed this entire 
team in orange. Ashak misses them both. Shepard with the rebound. Push ahead to Reeves and the layup with 109. Full court pressure from the Cats. Vescovi spins out of it. And Ziegler will be going back to the free throw line with 59.9. Fourth on Shepard with under a minute. Two shots, man. Ziegler at the line for two. Tom, think about Tennessee tonight. Only seven turnovers in this game, and the game has gone back and forth. A high possession game, but to be that clean with the ball, and Zakai Ziegler has handled it a ton, but he has not worn down, has played 32 minutes, 33 minutes in this game. His mental strength and physical strength just jumps out to me. Dillingham for three. Dead yet, he's got nope. 30. Army 32 for Dillingham. And a Tennessee timeout. I was talking with Zakai Ziegler. He said, I love this building. I love playing on the road. He has produced a monster game. We're back to rough in 30 seconds. Zakai Ziegler is the smallest volunteer basketball player since Ralph Pardo in 1980. He's played bigger than his 5'9 would suggest. Well, he's got a huge Valentine, and Rick Barnes told me this morning that, you know, I've got to have a guy that will hold others accountable within the game. And your point guard, Tom, they have to fix the problem before the coach has to fix the problem. And Zakai Ziegler said, Coach, that's me going forward. And he has complete control over his Tennessee teammates on the road in this game. You see the tattoo on the right arm? Bet on me. I would. Yeah. He bet on himself coming out of New York, finding a home in Knoxville, and his fan base reacting to him, even raising thousands of dollars in funds a couple of seasons ago when his home back in New York and Long Island burned down. The Tennessee up eight with 46 seconds to play. Edwards. Commits the foul to stop the clock and it puts Dalton Connect at the free throw line. What if this performance by Ziegler, by James, by Vescovy, they were stuck playing in a supporting role surrounding Dalton Connect, especially over the last six games. They've all stepped up big time tonight. I, I love the way Tennessee is going to win this game. It wasn't a 35 point game by Dalton Connect. They showed that they are much more than what this kid is. Now, come March, I want Dalton Connect on my team because he's capable of bailing you out in a late game situation and going for 30 but so good tonight for Tennessee to get multiple guys confidence offensively Dalton connect didn't go crazy he only took 14 shots so he trusted his teammates he trusted that Tennessee offense to keep the ball moving and they are 46 seconds away from heading back to Knoxville on the one bus trip they take I think really he, happy. Was, he was telling her that y'all got to step up your defense you think? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Dillingham will go to the free throw line with 39 and a half seconds left. Well, it's just an edge that you have to play with in the SEC this year in February. And Tennessee had it tonight. Kentucky not quite there. A very talented Kentucky team. Yeah, they are loaded with talent. Yep. This will be third loss in the last four games for the Cats. How does this impact how you think about what Kentucky's chances are to go on a deep tournament run? Well, the talent is still there. That's that that's undeniable. Now, again, they were not healthy tonight. DJ Wagner is an NBA guard waiting to happen. Got no minutes tonight. It's a 10 point game. So Kentucky, one of their issues. I know it sounds simple, but they've got to get healthy. This kid's a difference maker. His ability to get in the lane and stay in front of the ball would have definitely impacted this game. Cal said on his radio show tonight, probably a couple more days until Wagner is back, but that's a big piece. Not making an excuse. That's a big piece missing for Kentucky. A foul for Shepard. If that is indeed Shepard, that's his fifth. So he's done. Played every minute last time. Don't forget, we'll get you to Spokane for Gonzaga and St. Mary's just as soon as we wrap up these final 38.7 seconds here. Tom Tennessee 43 to 36 on the board. Jonas Adu with 10 rebounds in this game. His length and his toughness defensively around the rim was very impressive. And how about Awaka? Awaka plays 10 minutes and gets six boards. 
That's as good of a ratio for a rebounder as you can get. Dillingham working on Vescovy. Oh my goodness, that is a two. They will double check and take a look as Kentucky takes a timeout. It's eight with 30 seconds to play. It, it's hard to have your pickup point high on Dillingham because he's bringing it with so much speed. The Does previous three-point attempt being reviewed. Now that's a two. His right foot clearly on the line from that replay. But out of respect for his speed, he gets you backpedaling. Then his ability to put on the brakes and step back into a three. This guy can create his own shot, unlike many we've seen in college basketball this year. Not afraid. I think that's the first quality that jumps out about Dillingham. Not afraid offensively to rise and release. And yeah, exactly a two-point shot. 31.2 on the game clock. Doug Shouse with the communication. It's a career high for Rob Dillingham out of Hickory, North Carolina. Played his high school basketball at Combine Academy, then the Donda Academy that was started by Kanye, and then overtime elite in Atlanta. He said that those last two stops, I learned how to play with superstars and to distribute while picking my spots. He is, well, he is the one guy Kentucky can lean on tonight. Tom, down, down the road, don't be surprised if Rob Dillingham is not one of those NBA All-Stars. Hmm. He's got that speed and that scoring ability and that moxie about him that makes guys special. The only thing lacking, and we're talking about it today, he said, well, my free throw's kind of mid. You know, he missed one or two at the end of that game against Florida. Would have helped seal it. Yeah, that, that in his body. His body still needs to grow and develop. Get stronger. It will. Connect with 15 on 14 attempts. This is a layered Tennessee team. They can come at you in waves. They do so many things well. Reeves with the reverse and the foul. And they will have two coming on the foul from Dalton Connect. The last minute may take five. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're right. Well, Tennessee walked into a sold out rockin' Rupp Arena tonight. And from the opening possession, they were the aggressive team. Not that Kentucky wasn't aggressive. Tennessee was just more aggressive. And it started in the first half when we talked about every 50-50 ball, every loose rebound, rundown ball was secured by Tennessee. Another one for Reeves. Tennessee's jumped out to an eight-point lead. Threatened a couple of times, but every time Kentucky made a run, Volunteers had an answer. Vescovy solves the press. Adu going to take it, and he gets fouled by Dillingham. Dillingham fouls out with a career-high 35, and Jonas Adu with a chance to put a cap around this one from the free-throw line. I like the confidence by Adu. That was a strong finish. He had a soft finish in the first half that Barnes took him out of the game, but he just goes right at the contact, and for a seven-footer in the open floor to make that type of play, Big time play by Jonas Adu. Great effort by Dillingham, right? No doubt. Adu's got a double double tonight, 10 and 10. Tennessee's sitting on the century mark. Wow. I did not have 101 on the board tonight, but when Tennessee coaching staff insisted we want to run with Kentucky. That opened up the game for their stars, and it's going to result in Tennessee improving its conference record to 6-2. and two. Rick Barnes with another win inside Rupp Arena. We spent a good time at shoot-around today talking about the favorite places that he has coached in and the tough places on the road. Allen Fieldhouse, gallagher Iba, all those spots in the Big East, including the Carrier Dome. This will be the fourth win in Rupp under Rick Barnes. They won four total here from 76 to 15. Well, Tom, we're very fortunate to watch film with a lot of the coaches in the SEC, but that film session last night, it had a different tone and a different focus 
and a different message from Rick Barnes 24 hours prior to tip, and his guys got it. And to come in to Rupp and say, we are right here in the thick of this SEC race. We are a top five team, regardless of what the ranking's gonna say on Monday. Message sent by Rick Barnes and his guys to all of college basketball on a fantastic Saturday, by the way. Dillingham had 35 most by a freshman off the bench in Kentucky program history to tie Terrence Jones, but this was all the veterans for Tennessee. Vescovy, Ziegler, James, they power the volunteers to a road win in Rupp. That's a story from Lexington. Let's get you out west. Sean Farnham in Gonzaga with Dave Fleming.